I need to get this soundtrack. This is incredible. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to <laughs> Rogue Legacy, where we have three very unique individuals right here. Knave, Sir Gans, OCD, breaking things to restore MP but not HP. Bit of a change from the beta. Alzheimer is unable to pull up the map screen. Sir Kotaki, mage with dwarfism and baldness. All right. And Sir Maze, a paladin with dwarfism and ectomorph, or endomorph. You know, I think I'll take the endomorphic dwarf. He can't be knocked anywhere, but damn it if the enemies aren't gonna try. So I'll unlock the architect right here, and... Uh, that's mostly for the fact that he can upgrade our physical attack. I... I'm wondering if I should upgrade my barbarians and mages. I don't think I am going to, though. I think I'm just going to upgrade my attack significantly. And then, 290 gold here that I can wander outside, talk to the wonderful enchantress over here, and then get my very first rune, my vault rune for my helm, 175 gold. I now have the ability to double jump, and I am significantly more powerful physically. Additionally, I have 175 health, thanks, thanks to Kyder's help. So, we're doing pretty well for ourselves. And if you'll... Look over here, Kyder stays dead between generations. He never comes back, although the castle may change. So we have officially defeated the first boss permanently. And look at that damage we deal. 40 damage with a dwarf. Just imagine if we were using a regular character. It'd be absolutely brutal. Now, we can't be knocked back, so we have to be a bit careful that we don't rely on the knockback to get us out of trouble. Oh. And granted, not being knocked back does not mean we don't flinch. Flinching still happens. Knockback is just the action of being, well, knocked back further than flinching would. Luckily, we're able to one-shot most of the enemies in this room. In fact, pretty much every enemy in this room. Good gracious. Uh, I should really be using the Paladin Shield more to block damage that I can't dodge otherwise, but... You know what? That's fine. Defeat all enemies, there's still a couple of Doom bosses left in the room. Objective complete, never mind. We get... a Sky Rune. I have no idea what that does. Ow. <laughs> Lousy thing. Still, whenever we find the boss room for the castle, it is always guaranteed to have two areas in it. We found the Blood Sword, which... completely new to me, no idea what it does. We cannot fight Kyder again, pressing up, no effect. And oh, hell no. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Spikes and those downward little slash things are still my greatest weakness. That has not changed in the slightest. But my knowledge of the enemies and how to dodge them has changed a little bit. That is to say, it's gotten a bit better, as evidenced by the fact that I was able to defeat my old nemesis, the Giant Eye, in 13 minutes in Episode 1. So... I'm looking forward to seeing what sorts of enemies I encounter in other areas, though I am a little bit apprehensive about it as well, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to get absolutely annihilated on my first couple of runs. But that's how Rogue Legacy seems to work. You die, you get up again, you die, you keep moving forward. Hell, this game is pretty much like Dark Souls in that respect. You are expected to die, anything else is just gravy. Oh, goodness, okay, first enemy of the forest, the next area in the game. And already, I am going to get annihilated. I can tell that right now. This tall guard has a hell of a shield on him. Oh, and this little mace-swinging dude chain tore. It's just a bit too dangerous for my tastes. Luckily, I am able to take out some of the enemies here. And indeed, my normal strategies of just uh, fiddle around and see what works seem to be working out fairly well for me. Though I am a little bit worried as to what these floating rocks might do, or what that floating light is. Indeed, I have no idea whatsoever what that floating light is. Is it just a firefly? Is that it? I think it might just be a firefly. Cool. I can deal with that. And the rocks do functionally nothing. Good. It's good to know that before I try to use them as a platform. And we have a couple of slimes appear to divide. We've got... Santa? Santa, why are you here? I'm... Seriously! Dude with reindeer, in the background, just now. 
no idea why he's there, but hell, he's there. And we're back to the carnival. Sure. Let's try the carnival. Ten daggers to destroy eight targets. Maybe I'll be better at it this time. Okay, that's one. Now... Oh, just short. Uh, there we go. I now have no extra daggers. If I am to destroy... Oh, okay. Not going to get all the targets. You know what? That's fine. Oh, are you kidding me? So close. You know what? Screw it. <laughs> Just hit the targets, damn it. Hit them! There we go. There we go. 40 gold. Got three daggers left. Maximum I'd be able to get right now is another 50, 60, 70 gold, so another 180. Still not a bad... Oh, damn it. Okay, maximum I can get is another 110. Another 50. Zero. You know what? Oh. You know what? Screw you, little despondent clown man. I really could not care less about what you think about this situation. Very chest objective. Take no damage. That doesn't seem too difficult. Oh. Of course. Right after I say that. Naturally. Still forest. God, this is exciting. I've never been here before. No idea what to expect. I half expect Medusa heads to show up out of nowhere. Got little archers here. Ah, uh, the upgraded flame enemies. Blaze lock instead of flame lock. And regrettably, Sir Maze, our valiant dwarf, has been slain. But not after taking out a shitload of enemies. Holy crap, look at that. That's amazing. So what do we have? We have Sir Seller. Cognital... Cogenital insensitivity to pain. No, no pain. I can't see my HP while I have him. That's cool. Lady Chun-Li, the giant EDS. I still have no idea what EDS is. You are very flexible. Sure. Or Sir Cowan, the tunnel vision barbarian. Well, what are your spells? You've got an axe, you've got conflux. I think gigantism might actually... Or gigantism? Might give me a little bit of extra attack, but I'm just going to go with someone normal for this run, in the form of Sir Seller here. Upgrade my HP once or twice? No, I want to see what that blood sword is. I did just upgrade that, or unlock that after all. Uh, health minus 30, damage plus 2, weight plus 20, additional properties plus 1, vampirism! Oh! So I start with lower HP, but I recover HP. There are runes that let me do that, I just don't have any of them yet, so this might actually be worth it. And the extra damage. Hmm. You know what, I'll buy that. There we go, blood sword. God, that looks badass, look at that. Dark red sword, I'll upgrade my health once. And my carrying capacity. But yeah, as I thought, my HP display is completely gone. No idea how much health I have. I'll just have to wing it and try not to get hit. Luckily, I have Vampirism to heal me up whenever I kill an enemy. And it appears frequent meat and magic potion drops, so I should be fairly well off, so long as I'm careful enough that I don't accidentally run out of HP without realizing. Yep, 2 HP every time I defeat an enemy. Vampirism remains unchanged. Good to hear. Because Vampirism, I will admit, was one of my favorite runes to use. Oh, and here we've got a healing fountain. I'll save that for later. Sometime when I think I need it. <laughs> oh, look at that. Beautiful. Oh, here we go. Um, for some reason, Rogue Legacy starts to get framey after just a little bit playing, and I'm not entirely sure why that is. Oh, luckily, we found another blueprint right off the bat for a blood cape. Probably plus one vampirism again at the expense of more health. Still, that might be worth it just to get that whenever we kill an enemy, considering we haven't been upgrading our health that much, and we have been upgrading our attack damage. Oh, 24 damage. So, we're down 24. We're down 22 health. Uh, plus 19, plus... Or minus 19, plus 2, plus 4. 41, 37 health down. 35 health down. Uh, 33 health, 31 health. 
Oh, entrance to the tower. I don't know if I want that. 16 health. You know what? So long as I can keep track of my HP, that actually doesn't seem like that bad of a disadvantage. Oh, uh, 42 health. 40 health. And with minus 30 to it, I started with 145. So... Was I minus 30? Is that what I said? Whoa! Whoa there, buddy. Calm down. I'm just gonna grab this blueprint and exit. Thank you. There we go. Easy enough. Just get right out of that tower, but with a brand new item. So I said it was a minus 30, so I think I'm at 100 and... I was at 145, so I'm at 115 or so HP right now. That's manageable. Oh, lots of barrels. Sure, I'll take it. Cash, MP, all the stuff I need. 610 cash, too. That's not a bad start event, especially with that blood cape that I got. I should be able to afford that on my next run through. Oh dear, I didn't see how much health I lost there. Screw it. Forget covering my HP. I'll just remember it the next time I get this sort of trait. Oh goodness. Alright, keep running. We can do it. We can get out of this room. We can. Alright, now where the hell do I go? That leads to the tower. There's only one way I can go that would not lead to the tower. And that's through this way. Off to the left. I'll heal up at the fountain, which should put me at a fair amount more. If I'm not at full, I should be pretty close now. Ow. Damn thing. Oh, and some extra health. Oh, 30 extra health. That should counteract the hit I just took, which is good. Now I just need to keep heading east until I find the forest. Because that will always be where the forest is located. It's off in the east of the castle. And since I've already found where the tower is located, I should be able to avoid there fairly easily. Which means, for situations like this one, where I've just got a room with some treasure, I can just automatically go up here and know that I'm not going to be reaching the tower anytime soon. I can just explore this for any cash that it may give me. And I am at 1080 cash already, so pretty nice. Is there anything- oh my god! Huh. Okay, Conflux, let's do it. Screw these guys. <laughs> Actually, just, yeah, screw these guys in particular. There we go. Plenty of that for me. There is a chest up there that I cannot reach because I broke all those barrels using Conflux, but you know what? I'm okay with that if it means not taking as much damage from all those enemies since they all just gathered up there. What in the world is this? A dark teleport or something? Now entering the mine. Whoa! What the hell? Oh god, I'm in the middle of the tower. Uh, if I head down through this room, I should be able to... Did you just run up into spikes, Mr. Demon? You did. Ninjos are not the cleverest individuals, it seems. There we go. Enemy defeated. I am the best at this game. Oh, I'm digging this music, too! Holy crap, this is incredible! My ability to take on this area, though, is considerably 50 damage! Jesus Christ! Yeah, I need out of here, and I need out of here now. Jesus. Okay, so dangerous times await in the middle of the tower. Note to self, do not take dark portals. They transport you somewhere else entirely. And I'll bet that I can't use it again, either, which is good in this case, because I have no desire to use that thing again. Holy crap. 52 damage. I took one hit in there, and it was equivalent to about a third of my HP. And that was from one of the stationary turrets, so who knows, they may deal more damage than the others, but I doubt it. I really doubt it. Oh, Christ, nope. I will not die in this room to these things. I will defeat the skeletons that face me, I will defeat the scouts that face me, and I will make it safely to the bottom to claim my treasure. Yeah, there we go, an extra 110 gold. I'm just rolling in cash. 1710, I am actually fairly wealthy, come to think of it. I was just joking there, but I really am making it fairly well when it comes to money. 
I still haven't encountered the mini-boss that I know and love from the demo, though. I mean, with my double jump, I can actually take him on fairly well, so... Where could he be? My old pal, the giant knight. Oh, screw that noise. Visionary. Oh, that is a bad pun. Still plenty of cash for the pun, so 2100 gold now? This knight is just wrecking everything that comes his way, even if we don't know how much HP he has. Chances are he has, like, nearly no HP at this point, given the hits I've been taking lately. But hey, vampirism's been keeping us going, so that's perfectly okay by me. And that is one of the wonderful things about vampirism. You can just kind of forget about your health a lot of the time when you start to get a bunch of vampirism runes stacked, just because they're so good at recovering the damage that you take. You're going to be defeating enemies a lot, and the fact that you recover 20 health every single time you defeat an enemy is just invaluable. Yeah, that's probably a good idea, actually. My guy jumping up there to stop me from going into that area. A wolf! Holy crap, what the hell just happened with that wolf? It, like, charged at me? But I was already swinging my sword, so it died? I think? Oh god, the blaze lock. Nope, there we go. Got it. Gotta admit, that boost from Kaida really buffed up our damage early. And I gotta say, that is entirely welcome. Because I am not particularly adept at hitting things multiple times without getting hit. If you ask me to hit something once without getting hit, I'm your man. Let's say, like, you have a slime there. By the way, the boss of the castle area on the door that was shown earlier appeared to be a slime. So I'm assuming it's going to be a massive multiplying slime boss, so... I got that to look forward to, and I do actually look forward to it. It's going to be fairly fun to find new bosses and new adventures in this place, but I am just really surprised that this adventurer has survived for as long as he has. And I just jumped straight into a scout. I've- Oh no! Of course, right as I say that, Sir Seller dies, but look at all he accomplished! Two full rows of enemies and 2,000 cash. He is leaving his heirs rich. Hypochondriac, you tend to exaggerate. I'll bet that his damage text pops up weird. Weird, a uh, knave with farsighted? Or a barbarian with dextrocardia? That would give me tons of magic on a barbarian, so that sounds terrible. I'll just pick up the paladin again. Paladins are usually a fairly safe choice in just about any circumstance. I'm going to go see if I can buy some new stuff. First off, cape. Blood cape, yeah. Down to a hundred and... Minus thirty. Oh, plus thirty-eight armor, Jesus, yes! I'm gonna pick up that ranger chest immediately, holy crap. Plus fifty-five weight, though. I don't think I can equip anything else with that. Yeah, I can't equip it at all. It is just way too heavy for me. What if I de-equipped, like, the blood sword and re-equipped this? Still too heavy, damn. What if I de equip the blood cape? There we go, I've got 60 out of 70 weight available, so... I should be able to equip the ranger chest now. Why can I not... Wait, 60 out of 70... Oh, because I equipped the blood cape. I didn't have it equipped before. <laughs> Shit, what if I unequip my helmet? <laughs> There we go, 38 armor. That should protect the hell out of me. So that short foray down into the upper area actually... Or down into the upper area, up into the tower actually benefited me quite a bit. Plus 20. I don't think I can equip literally anything else. Oh no, I can. My helmet. So I now have a basic sword and a very basic uh, helmet. But I have a hell of a chest piece on me, protecting me from 38 damage at any given time. I am going to stay alive for days with this thing. Let's try one run with it before we end this episode, shall we? I wonder if things even do damage to me now. I don't want to test it out, but the first time I get hit. But then again, my guy's a hypochondriac, so I don't know if what he tells me will be accurate. Shit. Oh god, Rogue Legacy with all these deep and meaningful interactions between the set pieces. <laughs> Let's do it. I think I can take this. Did he just say I took two yeah, 1,241 damage. Whereas I actually took like 12 tops. 
Oh my god, look at this. All those enemies hit me and I'm still at nearly full health. 30... Okay, so 38 armor isn't just flat 38 damage resistance, but... Let's see what it is. Why well, haste rune. Oh, that makes me move faster. Let's see... Let's air jump one time, exaggerate the damage you take. Oh, there it was. 38 armor makes you take 15% less damage, so that's pretty goddamn boss. I'm okay with that. 15% less damage once we start to get those vampirism items back up from getting our uh, equipment successfully managed out. That'll be quite nice for us. Once I start to get the necessary weight, which means I'll need to upgrade weight something like 10 times to be able to equip the both of them with this chest piece. You know what? I'd almost be okay with that. Especially because I'm recovering so much health from all these lucky, lucky meat finds. Not to mention all the lucky, um... Bag drops. I've found, what is that, two bags of cash? Two sacks of cash from completely normal objects thus far? Oh god. Gotta be careful in this room, just too many enemies for me to keep, take, keep track of- Oh my god! Get out of here! Get the hell out! I can't fight this many. Is there nothing in this room? Oh god, abort. Abort mission. Flee for your life, you crazy mother- Oh, there is one thing, naturally. It's an exit up top. I gotta try! Gotta see where it goes. Alright, it goes to... The tower. Let me see if there are any chests right at the entrance to the tower again. Or the Maya, or whatever it's called. Come here, sucker. Let's fight this. There we go. 50 gold just for defeating an enemy. That's pretty cool. If I defeat a Planky, level 35. Jesus, yeah, these guys are outclassing me by just a level or 20. Meanwhile, tons of stuff to get. And I still love the music. Absolutely incredible. And a free chest! Alright, good. This is what I was hoping for. 300 extra gold from the Maya. That'll turn out pretty well. 1460 already. I don't want to mess with the canvas enemies since they don't seem to take knockback as easily. You know what? I'm okay with that. Oh, shit. 2600... 4000 damage might be an exaggeration, but not by much. We need to get you the hell out of here, guy. Oh, wow. What is that noise? Alright, turns out it was just a motorcycle outside making all that noise, but no worries there. So we've got... Some sort of giant-ass enemies throwing flames ass. I don't want to mess with those. Not for now, anyway. Instead, we're gonna go back to the safe castle where we can, uh... Hopefully make our way around a little bit easier. I'm gonna go back to the entrance, and there's since there's really nothing up top that can help me here anymore. I've only got 10 HP left though, and 15% damage reduction isn't going to help me much if my HP turns out to be, uh, zero. So, need to get those vampirism items back up and stat. I'm thinking that this chest armor might not, and I can't believe I'm saying it, might not be worth it. Especially for the weight it's got. That's really the biggest disadvantage. The fact that it is 55 weight means I'm not going to be able to use pretty much anything else while I have it equipped. So I think that for survivability, 15% damage less might be less useful than 4 HP on kill. So, we'll go with that. So we have Sir Hornsby, the knave, who is bald. We have Sir Gouda, the OCD barbarian. Or we have Sir Lancelot, the giant hypochondriac paladin. <laughs> have I mentioned I love this game for its traits? I really do. Just for the titles that you can give people. The divine paladin, the divine paladin, legendary paladin, feeble paladin, legendary knight. Okay, so the more enemies they get, the more exaggerated a title they get. So let's choose Lancelot. And before we do anything else with Lancelot, first things first, equip blood, de-equip the old armor. No armor, that's a pity. Oh well. Equip the sword, equip the cape. Bam. Done. And we'll buy, and we can't equip the limbs. You know what, that's fine. We've got 80 weight, we are able to equip the Blood Cape and the Blood Sword, that's 4 Vampirism for us. Right there, no problems. We have Sky Rune, multiple runes stack. Gain the power of flight, what the hell? So much for double jumping, we can fly? Also, get to move faster with the Breastplate Rune, that's perfectly fine. Do I need to actually equip the Breastplate for it to work though? You know what, let's unlock this too. Let's see how it works. 
Oh, so it's hovering. Oh no, it's genuine flight. We can move in it. That's really cool, and I think more useful than a double jump. Since it can function pretty much the same as a double jump, or can also just save me and keep me hovering in place. Okay. Oh, but I can't cancel it early, can I? Oh, I can. I just tap A again to cancel it early. That's actually really good. So I'm gonna go spend the rest of my... <laughs> oh my god, this flight. I'm gonna have to get used to it, but I think that it's pretty good. I'm gonna spend the rest of my gold on another health upgrade. And then off to the castle we go, flying giant Sir Lancelot with the double blood items. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, but I said I would end the episode after that uh, chess piece test run, didn't I? Well, I am one to keep to my word, so I think that this next run is going to be for the next episode. Until then, everybody, this has been PA, and stick around for more Rogue Legacy. Bye! <laughs>